Hi, my name's uh, Christopher Barrett from the University of Dundee in, in sunny Scotland. I'm a professor of reproductive medicine, and uh, I'm particularly excited to be talking to you today about uh, our award, which is at the, uh, going to be presented at the ESHRA annual meeting in Munich in, in 2014. Uh, this is based on a paper that we uh, wrote and, um, in 2012, and it was published in early 2013 in the journal Human Reproduction. And, and what this paper was trying to do was to understand one particular aspect of how a sperm cell interacts with the egg. And this is a, 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 an area which has received almost no attention over the last sort of 25 years. We understand a lot about the man contributes to male infertility. We understand that concept, but we don't understand really what causes sperm dysfunction. That's when there are sperm present, but they're perhaps not moving very well or in large numbers, or they don't particularly look particularly good. So what we try to do in this study is understand in more detail uh, how a sperm would interact with an egg and, and what might be wrong with these sperm cells with particular emphasis on looking at sperm motility and particularly how the cell regulates a very important uh, signaling system which is uh, the calcium signaling system in the spermatozoon. So this is fundamental to the sperm motility and is fundamental to how the cell responds moving in and out of excited movement, hyperactivation and how it would move within the female reproductive tract. So this study was to try and understand that contribution of calcium signaling to fertilization success and to the development uh, uh, of live births. And what we showed was, was actually that the calcium signaling system in sperm is probably quite complicated. Uh, it's involved in getting calcium through the plasma membrane to excite the sperm. And at the same stage, there's also calcium within the cell in very specific stores, which then activate the sperm cell. And these two systems seem to move in concert to actually get the cell at the right place at the right time and be able to get excited, suppressed, and zippy at the, at the right time. And what we showed was that in a number of men, these systems don't work particularly well. And that's the first time that this, this, this really had been developed. So we were really excited about, about presenting this data to the journal Human Reproduction. If I was asked, well, why, why is this study particularly important? Well, I would answer that simply the fact that it allows us for the first time to try and understand how a sperm cell works, particularly to look at this key event of calcium signaling. And that allows us for the first time to really get a feeling for how the sperm cell works, what might go wrong, and potentially to understand these, these sperm cells from these particular men in more detail. And now there's a particular technique available which allows us to record the, the calcium signaling events in individual sperm using a technique called patch clamping, which, which actually records the passage of ions Across the, across the plasma membrane of a sperm. And it's a fantastic development allowing us for the very first time to understand how a sperm cell regulates these ions. So having actually identified men who have potential defects in these systems, we can now start to first time understand the actual biophysical uh, issues that might be present in how the calcium signaling events take place. And even more importantly in that, gives us the potential in the future, perhaps, to actually using a drug discovery approach to try and correct that defect in vivo to actually then excite the sperm. So maybe it couldn't get excited because its, it's calcium wasn't getting it, getting it zippy enough, and we can use drugs to get it even zippier and actually maybe temporarily increase the fertilizing capacity to interact with the egg. So, so that was our excitement about this particular paper and, and our feeling that, that it actually has a wider implication of trying to understand sperm dysfunction and its place within in the infertility spectrum. So one of the questions would be asked is, is why would this study be one of the most downloaded studies from human reproduction in 2013? And I think 
my guess on this, as I, I don't know exactly why, would be related to the fact that it combines a scientific investigation, generation of hypothesis, and development of a, and testing of a model for sperm dysfunction, whilst at the same time having a potential clinical impact, i.e. it's done on human sperm at fertilization with the potential of finding a defective pathways that we can in, in theory actually use a drug discovery approach to treat. So I think it has the combination in a paper of a scientific investigation and a clinical relevance to that paper. And that's why I would suggest that the paper's been picked as, as one of the most downloaded ones in 2013 for human reproduction.